Is it all about to fall apart? Are we headed for a crash that could make 1932 look like a picnic? Are we looking? Are we heading for a crash that could make the Black Plague look like it was a good thing? And if so, what do we do? And now Mitt Romney has a year worth of food stashed in his basement, and so do every one of his children and, and grandchildren. This is like pretty much a requirement if you're a Mormon. And uh, this has been going on since the 1800s. Get ready. It's coming. But this is not just a religious thing. There's there's a whole secular part to this. Jim Rawls is on the line with us. He's the editor of survivalblog.com, the author of several books, including How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It. Jim, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Thanks for joining us. So uh, what do you envision coming and what is it that you are doing about it as uh, individually or the people who participate in survivalblog.com well uh, there's a number of different threats out there and i think it's just rational self-interest that motivates people like myself to prepare uh, there's uh, the threat of an economic collapse that could be triggered by a, a, a global credit crisis uh, we could very well see that in the very near future, uh, something along the lines of what happened in 2008, but only worse, and that could trigger a whole cascade of events, uh, everything from margin calls to bank runs to stock and bond market collapses. Uh, it, it could get very ugly. Right. Uh, that's probably at the forefront of everyone's mind But, but right we now. had that here in 1929. And, you know, people stood in bread lines and soup lines and things like that. And eventually Franklin Roosevelt put into place some social safety net programs, that's some of which survive to this day. But uh, we didn't have riots in the streets. We didn't have people shooting each no, other. But, but, Tom, in, in the 1930s, probably 20% of the population was still living off the land, is actively involved in farming and ranching. Right, now it's about 2%. Uh, yeah, at most. Uh, we have w 1 or 2% of the population feeding the other 98%. Right. We have very long chains of supply. We have a much more technologically complex society with long chains of supply, automated ordering systems that are dependent on the Internet, uh, very lean management, uh, inventory control management with the, the Japanese Kanban system where what you see on the grocery store shelves is all they have. There is no longer a back room you know, with cases and cases of food. It just doesn't right. exist anymore. Right. The other factor Just in time delivery, it's called. Yeah, just in time, or, or what they call Kanban inventory yeah. control. Um, the other factor is, in the 1930s, we still had a fairly polite society. Uh, now we have a society where, you know, there's practically a riot every time a local sports team either wins or loses uh, a big game. So... Um, I, I don't think there's a lot of civility left in our society. Uh, and I think that if we do have a major economic cataclysm, that uh, people are, are less likely to stay law-abiding. But when, when you look at, uh, you know, the Fox News narrative uh, set aside, because it, it turns out in retrospect to have been such a false narrative, when you look at what happened in New Orleans, for example, during Katrina, mm -hmm. you had, there was virtually no civil unrest. The, the, in fact, the, the, the most horrible, violent things that were happening was white vigilantes coming into town shooting people for fun, and some of them were being prosecuted for that. Uh, it, it, the, people, it seems like Americans are still of the mind that when all hell breaks loose, we, we band together, we help each other out. Generally, yes. Uh, but unfortunately, the... So isn't, it, isn't it more important do, to help? Do, do get engaged in looting. And in fact, in New Orleans, there were even police officers that were looting. And that well, that, I wouldn't call that looting. I mean, you know, when a city has been well, shut down and there's no food, uh, you know, and, the, and uh, that's, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but uh, however, whatever we want to call it, isn't it more important to get involved and build a civil society and build absolutely. a less fragile society rather than being a survivalist and going out and getting, you well, know, 100 well, acres in, in, go hand in Wyoming hand. or something? If you, if you look at, at, at the survivalist movement and then the whole uh, back-to-the-land resiliency uh, movement, right. uh, there's a lot of people that are, are pushing t toward um, developing truly 
self-sufficient, resilient communities where the majority of the food is is grown within a say a twenty or thirty mile radius of of a city. Sure, yeah, even so, even yeah, urban farming. I mean, this is happening in and Brooklyn and Detroit right yeah. now. Sure, and I think that's a good thing. Um, obviously, <laughs> there's a lot of buildings that need to be torn down in Detroit, and a lot of that land originally was farm and dairy land. Yep, it could be put back to that use. It is. It is being actually. Yeah, you know these so, these urban um, dr- urban farms. Yeah. I, I think it's, it, and it, this is an issue that really transcends left and right, mm-hmm. and it, it transcends uh, religious and non-religious. Most people, if you if they sit down and and look at all the threats that exist, whether you know everything from a solar flare to economic collapse to biological warfare to a naturally existing uh, occurring. Um, pandemic, like a, a new strain of influenza, there's all kinds of different threats out there, but if, if people have common sense, they'll re- recognize that uh, they really have to depend on themselves and their local communities to pull through. Right, so shouldn't, shouldn't instead, of, instead of being survivalists, or instead of like the, 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 the mentality that's promoted by Glenn Beck, and uh, who's a Mormon, or, or, or Mitt Romney, or the Mormon religion of, you know, be ready for your own family, and uh, and actually, I shouldn't speak for the Mormons. I, I'm not a Mormon. I don't know enough about them to speak of them. But sh- shouldn't well, they? Yeah, actually, the Mormons are quite charitable, and they they. I'm not a Mormon either, but in their defense, I must say that they have they've established the, uh, the equivalent of a food bank on steroids. They have what they call a bishop storehouse system right. with large warehouses full of food that they right. intend plus, to dispense in charity. Plus every they family has large. a year's worth of food in their basement. Right. But, and, but, but what about... Each year's uh, supply of food that, uh, that one individual families have in their basement represents two things. One is uh, they are going to be one less family that's rushing to the grocery stores at the 11th hour and cleaning out the shelves. Right. So they're part of the solution. The other thing is, uh, for, for families like mine, where I have almost a three-year supply of food, I don't look at that as a three-year supply for one family. I look at that as a one-year supply for three families. Okay. It's very important to be charitable. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree with you on that. I'm, do you, uh, we're talking with uh, Jim Rawls, survivalblog.com. Jim, what, what could, you know, and you, and you went through the list of the things that could provoke, I suppose, a, a crisis, but um, a, a, a crisis that would produce civil unrest. What, what, what are your thoughts on the guys who are saying, get guns? Well, we have I just one minute wise, left. Actually, uh, we, we live in a society where you know, the police cannot respond in a timely manner. And if we're in a major emergency where there's a disrupt- disruption of power and communications, the response time for police could be stretched out into hours or even days. So I think it's prudent for people to, to arm themselves. People shouldn't live with a whole mentality of fear. Well, it seems to me like that. It's like carrying an umbrella, you know. Well, uh, I don't carry an umbrella when it's not raining. Well, but you own an umbrella, right? Yeah, I do. You recognize the fact that rain can exist. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, I look at it as an. It's just I just I don't center I, I don't center my life around my umbrella. I, that, that, I guess that's what I'm saying, and that's that that's the thing. It just seems to me that we should be working hard to build a resilient and civil society rather than getting ready to bail out of it. But well, I I don't I don't plan to to bail out of society. I plan to be there to help be part of the solution. Yeah. So part, you're you're suggesting we should do both. Yep. Uh, Jim Rawls, survivalblog.com. You can read all about it, the editor of Survival Blog. Jim, thanks for dropping by today. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Interesting conversation, and uh, good luck to you.